Welcome to The Drummer and the Great Mountain, a podcast where we share effective tips and practices for working with adult ADD, ADHD in a natural, effective way without the use of medications. Each episode, join me, your host, Batman Saram, along with the author of The Drummer and the Great Mountain, Michael Joseph Ferguson. Join Michael and myself in an interactive discussion of sharing our stories as we journey together in transforming what can be the gift of being what we call hunter types. This podcast is intended to be your audio companion to the book written by Michael, who joins me each episode where we both will strive to foster dialogue, give you our personal insights, and share both of our experiences on this similar path that we are all on. Our intention and hope is that along with the book, this podcast gives you an additional perspective as you listen to us delve deeper into each chapter of the book to give you even more tools to go along with what it is that you are reading. Visit us at drummerandthegreatmountain.com to purchase the book and look for more tools, tips, and updates, as well as giving us feedback on this podcast. Join our growing global community of creative types, entrepreneurs, and out-of-the-box thinkers on our shared journey. Welcome to the Drummer in the Great Mountain podcast. Hello, friends, and welcome once again to the Drummer and the Great Mountain podcast, your audio companion to the book on a uh, guidebook to transforming adult ADD, ADHD, what we refer to here in our audio world, our sit down as hunter types. And we're going to get right into it today. I have Michael on the line, as usual, the author of the Drummer and the Great Mountain, and we've come a long way as they say, and we are at um, what I have noticed to be, at least this is my experience, black and white, either this is actually something with hunter types that I have hunter type friends. I was just talking to a musician friend of mine. Time management actually is not one of his major obstacles in being a hunter type. He, He actually has this part down. It's the other things that he's working through in the transformation process. Um, yet for me, exercise and diet was like really weak and I worked on it and I continue to work on it. And it's a struggle all the time and every day, especially food for me. Um, Mm -hmm. and I feel like time management is right there in the middle. I feel like I can look back at a time that it was a lot worse and I can see I'm working through it, but I'm far Far from perfecting it. Um, But to kind of bring us into it, this is all part of this chapter and this concept in Michael's book is all part of an integrated system. It connects what we covered in episodes five and six, which was life visioning and what we have coming up also, which is um, also in the book, a chapter we'll be covering on this podcast on specifically creating a support system and life coaching. So this is just one of those um, pieces, time management is as a part of being successful in your life visioning goals. And as we will be talking about in a future podcast on creating a support system and, and talk about life coaching, all of this, our intention, we've been kind of teasing it here and there. Our intention still is to have things like this in a webinar, uh, in an online course in the future. It's definitely one of our goals and we will keep in touch with you through the website, through Facebook, and through through all of these things. Um, And I do want to let you know that, as always, we try our best to certainly cover what we can, but we certainly can't get to it all, and we will do what we can here in in time management with this podcast and the time that we have. So, no further ado, hello, my friend. Michael, how are you? Doing wonderful. Thanks so much. How are you doing? Good. Um, I, I find it interesting. The, 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 the flags or term of a better word, just kind of what comes up for me when we hit certain topics that, and, and what I notice the feeling that comes up is, wow, I still have a lot of work to do here, but I have to tell you when it comes to time management, I, 
I don't fret that when I think of it as, wow, I still have a lot of work to do. That's not necessarily a negative thing. I feel mm. like for the first time ever, I'm actually excited. In other words, mm. that I have work to do. That means there's still stuff to achieve here. And I actually look forward to like knocking them out in, in you know, in, in little mini mm. milestone goals. So tell me about time management. Tell me how to kind of integrates with everything and, and give me that overall overall perspective. Yeah, you know, and I was thinking about this right before the podcast, and and there's a couple of pieces, and some of this I mentioned in the book, and some of it is reflections after in in working with different clients. Um, I think it's really important it, when, to zoom out a little bit as hunter types, as people who may have been diagnosed with ADD, ADHD, who who we all, most of us, I don't think I've ever met someone who isn't like hyper creative in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but one of the big challenges is integrity. And I want to be specific about that. There's two ways to look at the word integrity. That's a big word. And uh, I think it's really important to highlight as we're going into this. So integrity, uh, if you think of like a like structural integrity, um, like a building is structurally, is structurally sound, um, time management really connects in with that. And specifically, time management is your through line from your visions and your goals and actually your the source of inspiration how you take that into the world how you bring that into manifestation in the world when you have good time management that i mean it's so difficult to do it without it you have to have some kind of good system in place in order to take your ideas into form and it could be any idea any goal that you have it needs to happen in time at some point. And so having a system by which you do that, and so we, most of us have never been taught this in school. And so we're left to learn it on our own. The other side of integrity, which I know I struggled with immensely, especially from like my teens and it, through my twenties was doing what I say I'm going to do. And I know this is an issue for a lot of us hunter types. Uh, and there's a lot of shame around it. And so the, the usually it goes like this. You want like your heart's in the right place and you're like, I can do this. And you make a promise to do something and then you don't do it. And it could be in a relationship. It could be with work. And then you, you feel like you beat yourself up after. And so, again, time management, for, a lot of times it's forgetting. It's not being mindful. It, it's not or possibly not saying no when you should say no because you want someone to be happy or whatever. So all of this, it, this is all around integrity and having integrity is a key to manifesting what you want in your life. And, and it is not easy, but it is essential and it takes time. So if you're having challenges with this, stick with us. And I think some of these tips were going to help you moving forward. And again, part of it is just forgiving yourself. It's like part of this is how you're wired and having health and all these all these other pieces in place is going are going to really help in terms of b building on a good foundation and building time management systems that really work. I find that really powerful. I never thought of I never thought of the the tie in of the two together. I honestly didn't, but now it like brings up so much for me in the I can only talk about the world I know and and that's in the music world. And I now, literally, as you were talking about integrity, without judgment, mind you, I just brought up memories of how many times I would talk about a musician or a bunch of us would talk about a certain musician. And literally, the, um, the paradox of these two sentences together, mm. genius at the bass or genius on the guitar, but man, what a flake. <laughs> Yeah, and, like and, and and now it makes sense and and how it makes sense is a lot of ways in which you approach this book and you mentioned on the website is that a lot of artists tend to be hunter types. Yeah. And now, it, wow, that really just makes sense. And because I didn't think like that. I don't know. Sometimes it's weird when you bring up that word genius in anything anyone does. You almost think like that means they also have their life together, but we yeah. know that's not the case. So <laughs> now that makes sense. They may be a genius of what they do, but they're. And let me ask you a question. When you say that, though, just in case anybody else was wondering, that word in, and, and you said integrity. I think there's a subjectivity, and I'm wondering just to get your opinion on it since you brought it up. It's possible they could actually have a person could have integrity with others. 
but not with themselves, That's or it right. could be both. They could not have it with themselves and with others, but either way, the time management piece is about having that with yourself, right? Is that right? Is that the that's right thinking? It. That's, that's it. And, and specifically, so this is key. It's part of it is some people have an ability to maintain their integrity with other people, but they, so promises they make to others, but they don't keep the promises they make to themselves. Got and it. that is a key mm-hmm. piece to this. And that's one of my great revelations when I was in my early thirties was I could accomplished projects that I'd work with other people on. But as soon as I tried to do my own thing, (laughs) I couldn't do it because I wasn't keeping the problem. I wasn't holding myself accountable in the same way I would hold myself accountable to other other people, which even there I was really struggling at times to do it. So I mean, to me, I had both, but I I realized this piece of integrity is essential. And and I was able to accomplish a lot, but there was also a lot of like, oh, I didn't do this. And I'm sure people were like, oh, he kind of flaked on that. And they maybe gave me a pass on it. But but see, now I can say now, say like if I make, if I give my word to something, I keep it. And if I can't, if I don't keep it, I've at least acknowledged it. And I've seen, I've found a way through, but I'd say 95% of the time I'm in my integrity. And it took me a long time to get there. So that's why I'm saying, so people are listening, like feel overwhelmed by this. It does take time. It has a lot to do with health and your, your systems of just maintaining clarity, but it also is maintaining a good time management system. I love that. And why I love that is the last part of what you said brought it all together for me right here in this conversation, which was I was thinking as you were saying that I know for me, as I said in the beginning where I went from like zero in this area to like, I feel like I'm at a five out of 10 and maybe I'm being harder on myself. I I do feel like I have some work to do. When I was at a zero, I know for a fact it was tied to my self-worth. Why would I have integrity for myself when I didn't think anything of myself? I.e., why didn't I think a lot of myself? Because I was overweight and depressed. Mm. Mm. Boom. Yeah. There you if, go. If you're, if you're not taking care of your health, and how many times on this podcast have we tied everything with the hunter type right back to this? If you're yeah. not taking care of yourself and you don't feel good, if you don't feel good, that means you don't, value yourself if you don't value yourself how are you gonna keep to that project or that milestone you promised yourself you would do it's it almost seems like it's you're setting yourself up for failure yeah that's it that's it and again all of these pieces are things that you'll be working on you know for the rest of your life i mean you you get to you get to milestones you get to places where certain things lock in but it you know there it's i still i'm still challenged by the health stuff, maintaining my exercise, you know, the time management, all these things are still challenges, but I've got a system to fall back on. And that makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. It really does. So you don't fall back as far uh, because you've been able to build a a certain structure around it. So not to give illusions to like, it'll all change and you'll just be happily ever after, but (laughs) it can make, you can make huge strides in a short period of time. And I've watched it happen. Agreed. Agreed. So it's funny. I, I brought it up. Tell me about time management and, and projects about this paradigm of how we look at projects. Yeah. So there's three main headings that uh, pr- pretty much three overarching categories inside this system. And again, this is what this has worked for me. Feel free to change it or alter it. Uh, but what I found is, in especially working with media projects and creative projects, I've successfully been able to take those through to completion in a way that was satisfying and successful, including the book. So there, I have some merit behind this, and I feel like part of this is just simplifying it so that, and this is what I've had to do for myself and then also assist other people in. So there's three main headings to think about when you're designing a time management system that will work, that I find will be successfully um, maintainable. First, piece is projects. The second piece is action items. And the third piece is scheduling. It's that simple. Those are the three headings that you really need to wrap your brain around. And we're going to go through each one of these um, individually. So the first order of business is when you have your life and you've got all these different things going on, your brain needs some way of categorizing where to put stuff. 
And so what I found works best and what I locked into this fairly early in my 20s is everything is a project. Just think of everything, every kind of – any piece in your life is a project, meaning finances would be a project. Home could potentially be a project. Work or your work life could be a project. Family would be considered a project or, or your creative life is a project. So think in terms of big overarching themes and it could be anything. It's as long as you feel like, okay, I can wrap my brain around. That's a container that I can create and put something in. Uh, and it could be something more specific, like a goal. So say you have a goal to travel to India in the next year, that's a project. And obviously for me, it's a little bit easier in terms of working in the media because it's like every single client project is a project. So it's kind of where I adapted it from. But then I just found, well, every single piece of my life, I can say, okay, well, that's a project. So every, there, there's no, there's nothing in your life in terms of something you would take action on that it isn't centered around some kind of project. So I just, I, and I want to bank this off of you because I want to hear your perspective Emmett, mm -hmm. on it. So what's, when you hear that, what kind of comes pops to mind for you? Do you have any questions or thoughts that, that uh, connect with you on that? Well, for me, I think this was part of is and continues to be part of my transformational process. I think that, that word project was definitely not a paradigm I used to think in. And now when I do, and, and no, I shouldn't say that. So when I looked at a project previously, whether it was finances or home or work, um, I did well, obviously, as most hunter types do, if they, if in their nature of the project, it was short term. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I'll humbly say, I did really well at that. If in its nature it was short term, I would do it. I would nail it. I'd probably say I did it better than most people in that area. However, life doesn't work like that. What mm -hmm. I found is until I, I started working with the wiring that I am and who I am as a hunter type is that I found the more projects that are just by their nature, long term. I like what you say here, finances. Um, certainly relationships, family, work, these are in their nature long-term and that's where I yeah. would burn out. And yeah. that's what I continue to work on. A, with realizing it's a longer race um, and B, now that I have the tools that I didn't have before, I will go back for me that I, there was no way to succeed in long-term projects, whatever of these categories you said, because I was constantly tired all the time and I mm -hmm. was unmotivated to finish them if they weren't in their nature short. Why? Because you need stamina in long-term projects, don't you? Yeah. And if you're overweight and depressed, good luck. Hunter yeah. type or not, I'm just saying specifically for a hunter type, if those things aren't in order. So now I'm finding that it's really interesting you say that because now I'm finding that I'll look around at a project and I'll be like, whoa look at me like look how long i've been in this and it's still going and it's maintaining yeah. and it's moving forward so yeah that's that's my view of it is for me it comes back to health that's great so so if when you're thinking about projects think about simplification and you will know like whatever makes sense to you is what's right. So um, if you need to break something down to, to like travel to India, you may, instead of thinking of travel as a whole project, you may just say, okay, travel to India is a project. The reason why that's important is then how you're going to then create a system by which you track that particular part of your life. Uh, it needs to be something you can wrap your brain around. So Inside of projects, every single project has action items. Mm -hmm. Second category. So project action item scheduling. Action items is a second step. So every action item is connected to some project. That makes it – instead of just having a huge list of action items, you now can whittle it down to action items per project. And this makes it, again, far more manageable when you're thinking in terms of scheduling and other things. So the third piece of it, and this is, this is crucial, is, and this is the piece that took me a while to get, is that scheduling is essential, and this is where we get into time management, 
taking action items and then placing them on your calendar mm -hmm. in time so that they are accomplished. Because if you just have a long action item list, the odds of you actually getting to those action items and it just sitting there and doing nothing is pretty high. So in order to maintain any project that you have, any goal that you have, each place as many action items as you can on your calendar in time in order for those to then you can tackle them, handle it, and move on. So the, again, this, the suggestion is split your life up into a series of projects that make sense to you. Uh, it broad or even as specific as you want. It really doesn't matter as long as you can get your brain around it. Every project has action items and as many action items as you can, you should put on your schedule in time so that those action items can then be accomplished. Before we get to the time management tools piece of, of your system that, that you have in the book and we cover here, we're going to cover here. I have a question for you, but I guess it's half statement, half question. When you're talking about the scheduling part and how critical this is to, to the three pieces of, of, the, of the projects, the action items, and the scheduling, if, I, if you think back to when you first started working on your process and transforming the way you look at life as a hunter type, is it hard? Is the scheduling part hard because of something else that you mentioned over and over about hunter types is that we live for the stimulation thing and there's kind of no stimulation in like planning something out and putting we because don't we live for like doing it at the last minute, but we do things really well at the last minute, but you can't maintain that. Isn't that where the burnout comes from? So is that why at first it's really hard to kind of schedule things is because you're used to kind of living for more stimulation route? I, you know, that's a, that's a good point. I think it, when your brain chemistry, when you're not uh, attending to it, you, it, we're always like, I still watch myself kind of get the adrenaline rush of, of completing something. So that's always there. That, that kind of never, I mean, even if you're eating the perfect diet and exercising all the time, that tendency is still going to be in the wiring. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I, what I found is that you, you when you're inspired, when you feel that sense of, oh, I want to get this done, like you're, you're really feeding off of what, you, you know, the life that you want to create, mm -hmm. it gives you enough juice to then go, okay, well, now I'll put this on the calendar and I'll start, you, you, we're capable of doing it. In fact, I mean, it's, it's something that we can actually get really good at. Mm -hmm. So I, I find that like time management doesn't necessarily have to be something, if it feels like a weight, you need to readjust your thinking around it because you're you're maybe putting a should on top of it instead of like uh, I get to do this. Like uh, these are I I get to actually put things on the calendar that I, I want to do that are going to help me, they're going to nourish me, and it should have that association. And if it doesn't, you may want to take a step back, maybe do some journaling and think about okay, why do I have that association with it? Does it feel like because this this is your opportunity to create the life that you want? So it, there should be a certain level of excitement around it and that's why ding light bulb popcorn popping that's why life visioning is before this because this is yeah, i've literally exactly. in the last five minutes you said five times create if you're doing it in the paradigm of the life that you want and ladies and gentlemen that's the key that's the key it's not going to be it's not going to be, as Michael said, should have, I'll say it, a burden to do something that you don't want to do because it's going to be part of your life vision. So that's it. Okay, understood. Let's get on to time management tools. Okay, so we've got the three headings, which is uh, which are projects, action items, and scheduling. Okay, so the tools to then make that happen. There's only three again. So the first one is a calendar. And we'll talk about that in a second. Second one is your action item list or lists. Uh, and then the third is reminders. And another key, key piece that most people forget is reminders. In fact, most time management systems or books on time management don't place enough emphasis on it. So calendar, action item list, reminders. And so going through each one individually, calendar is one single, this is very important for, for hunter types, one single place you place all events in your life that you're scheduling. It's one place. It's not four places. It's one single place. 
uh, either physical or digital. And I'd say I usually push people if they have like a phone and they have a laptop they use to towards digital because there's a, there's a couple extra benefits to it that you don't get in. And I'm going to do the we're going to cover the high tech and low tech version of this. But either way, it's one place that you track all your appointments, anything that's on your schedule. And you get in the habit of using it. Two, so the second part is the action item list. This is calendar action item list reminders. Action item list or lists. This is simply where you write down, here's the action items related. And each one of them is going to be related to some project. So if you write an action item like, uh, let's go back to the example of take a trip to India. So that, say that's the project, parentheses. Take a trip to India, action item, schedule uh, a meeting with my friend next week who has been to India and has connections there. Something to that effect. So action item list or lists. Uh, in, I don't want to go too deep into that, but uh, if you can have one, it's helpful if you have multiple lists. Some, for, for me, I have too many projects going on that I have to be able to have separate lists for each project. But then there should be some place where you have like kind of a, a master list, at least for the week, mm -hmm. where you know, okay, these are my main action items for the week. And most of them, try to put them on your schedule. And then a couple will probably just reside on the list and you need to be able to look at those. So... Simply put, every action item should be connected to a project and your action item list, uh, which we'll go into more specifics on how to track that in a second, should have um, – each one should be connected to a project and you can have one individual list per project and then at least one list that you reference that's not very long that is, say, your weekly action item list. The third piece is reminders, and this is specifically – uh, if it's digital, it's like pop-up phone reminders or desktop reminders on your laptop. Uh, or if you're doing uh, the old-fashioned way, post-it notes. Put it, things up where you can see them so that you remind yourself of what's coming up. It's really important, and, and I encourage people to be creative, but diligent. If you know you forget something, I mean, what I often after a coaching call, I'll say, look, take that right on a post-it note, stick it on the dashboard of your car so you see it. So you have to gauge your level of what you need in order to remind yourself to do a particular item. So again, reminder, and they could also be affirmations, which I often, which are really good. So if you forget, if you forget one of the pieces that we talk about here that really jumps out at you as far as you know, like the piece around integrity that we mentioned earlier, write it down as a little note, throw it on a, a post-it note, put it somewhere, or put it on your calendar as a reminder that pops up once a day or once every couple of days. So you go, oh, right, that's a thought I choose to think about, which is what an affirmation is. And that then becomes part of your, your time management. I have a note on that. It's, it's wonderful to hear you say that because I don't think we ever necessarily discussed what you just said about the affirmation mixed with the, with the reminder, but uh, good to hear you say that. And one, transparency note for me in, in my process and in, in my journey here down the, the hunter type path um, is that it's routine now. I'm happy to say at least in this area, I'm, I'm confident, which is, you know, uh, having a routine for going to work out. And for me, my workout is the pool. And with that comes, unlike going to, to work out in other fields, there's a lot of things you have to make sure you have when you go to work. If you're going straight to the pool, you have to make sure you have the goggles, you have the things to protect, the earwax to protect your ears. And there's all kinds of little equipment that you need if you're really going to be swimming for an exercise. And it's routine now. I'm happy to say it's in place. But to get there, my reminder in the morning to pack the stuff I needed because the first few times it was frustrating. I'd um, leave work, realize I'm missing two things. I would have to go home to get them by the time I do. And then it's too late to go. There was all kinds of excuses then in the way. Um, my reminder to pack my stuff in the morning, I had a picture of my son. That's mm. my, that was my affirmation. That's wow. it. There was, wow. there was no excuse after, there was no excuse after that. There was no, well, let me go take a shower first. No, his picture popped up. That's all I needed took the three minutes and, and I think as hunter types we tend to 
that I don't know if it's excuses. Maybe you can come up with a better terminology, but we make things bigger than they are in order to kind of not yeah. to do them. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. oh, well, I have to go take a shower before. Wait a minute. It took me two and a half minutes to pack my swimming gear. What was I making yes. a big deal about? Well, trick yourself. It's almost like tricking yourself in a good way. Set up those affirmations and then you'll see, oh, it was never a big deal to begin with. So I just thought I'd share that. You know, and that's a good point is that it, it's easy to and I think that's just part of the wiring. It's easy for us to feel overwhelmed because all of that's part of kind that's of the, the piece around ADD is that like all these thoughts flood together. And that sometimes makes us very creative. But on the other end of it, it, it it's that there's no separation between one thought and another. And again, ah. this is why starting to use this system really helps that and, and along with journaling, journaling is also another key piece that really goes in tandem to all the time management pieces here because you might be doing some journaling and come to some revelations and then take some of those revelations and place it on the calendar. And also life coaching, which we will discuss, which is, which is you know, the supercharging way to get time management systems really dialed in and moving. Got it. I, one of the things that I feel like I'm, the reason I'm still a five out of 10 on time management is um, full, full disclosure, I'm stuck between low tech and high tech worlds because I feel like I sometimes get into a thing of, you know, in the old days, our parents mm. didn't have uh, digital things. I'm going to do these set of reminders or calendar thing. I'm going to do it on a physical calendar. And then yeah. I, because it's easier when I think of something in the moment, I put it in my phone. So th yeah. this, I'm still struggling with this, but get into a little bit about the low tech and high tech for us. Yeah. So that's a good point. So, so I'll go through the low tech and high tech and I don't recommend splitting them up. I think you got to pick a horse and run with yep. it. You got to, because what's going to, and, and this is what causes, it caused me a lot of challenges early on. And I it, know it, it, it's really challenging for other people. Pick a system and stay with it. It's that, it's that simple. You got to just say, okay, I'm committing to this system and I'm going to do it. So, so we're going to go through low tech and high tech. So the low tech system is paper-based planner. That's it. I mean, there, there's no other, that, that, from my experience, there's no other way to do it efficiently and manage your life. You can't just have like a calendar and scribble stuff on it unless your life is really, really simple <laughs> that you might be able to pull that off. But most of the time, most hunter types that I know, we need some kind of stronger system to maintain our life. So I recommend paper-based planner and specifically, and I, I don't like to plug certain brands, but I can say at least from when I used to use paper-based planners, um, which was fairly early on, but I did lock into a good system. Franklin Covey makes very good planners. They're more expensive, but they're really solid. They have a lot of extra features that most other planners don't have, specifically two sheets per day for writing notes writing your schedule down. So I would highly recommend if you want to just use a paper-based planner system, Franklin Covey's really good. There's probably other ones out there, but that's the one that I can wholeheartedly recommend. And there's other ones that I, I, I found were challenging. So that's the only one that I can say really does work. So the key with the paper-based planner is take it everywhere. Everywhere you go, it's there. You never leave it. Some like it, it is with you 24/7. You have an idea, you write it down. You set up a projects area in the back of it where your notes are. So each project has a chunk of pages so that you know, okay, any idea or thought or whatever it is, it goes in that one spot. It's very important. And then we'll go through the, the what the equivalent would be with the computer. Take it everywhere, write all your events and every single event that shows up in your life that you're going to schedule, you write it in it. That is, that's the commitment, whether you use the high tech or low tech system. Um, the other thing is you try to have at least one area where you have a main action item list. And again, it's a little trickier with doing a paper-based planner, but try to keep like the main action items for that week. And then you might want to separate out the different projects. Each project has a little area where you write down your action item lists for things that you want to do. Um, that's, I think, those are the basics for the low tech system. Is there any thoughts on that? Anything that I, you think I'm missing on that? I think that I think, covers the basics. I think that covers it. And I, I've, the one thing I find is if, if you find yourself going through this process and some of the things you're going to read in the book and you hear us saying this podcast, I know I still 
feel like this sometimes. It's like, this is so silly in a way. Like, I can't believe that I have to train myself to write stuff down on a paper calendar. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it does. It does in a way feel that way. It did in the beginning for me. But when you look look back on your life as a hunter type and think, well, did I succeed not doing that? And I think yeah. it goes back to what you're saying is we, we our wiring tends to make things more overwhelming than they maybe are or things do yeah. overwhelm us. But it sounds silly. And so if you're kind of just tuning into us or just reading the book, I know these things sound so basic that you're like, really? I have to yeah. read about a system that's telling me, I know, I get it. The only yeah. thing I would give to you is, were you successful so far not following yeah. these basic things? So that's yeah. my only thought on it. Yeah. I mean, this is just, I don't know how else to do it. I don't know how else to navigate life without having some of these basic systems in place. Uh, so going into the high tech, I mean, again, these are going to be, it's the same process, but using um, a computer and a phone. I mean, so I'm guessing most of the people that are tuning in, you know, you've, you've had to be somewhat tech savvy to even know that this podcast exists. So I'm assuming that the, most of the people listening have probably a smartphone and most likely either a desktop or a laptop computer that they use on a regular basis. So um, same systems apply, calendar software. So basically, instead of having uh, a physical calendar, you use uh, I use Google Calendar. Uh, you can there's many other ones out there. That's the one that's usually the most integrated into a lot of other systems. So I recommend it. But feel free to just pick a calendar system that you can sync with your phone. So like if you have a Windows phone, then you use the Windows version of that. But the key is if you have a phone, you have a laptop, then they should be synced together. And if you don't know how to do it, get on YouTube, do some research, go down to the phone place, talk to them. Uh, it's worth it. It's worth it to do it. Um, so basically what I recommend is um, – if you have a phone and you have a laptop, then that's your primary time management system. Now, if you have a desktop computer, it's a little trickier because you don't have it with you all the time. But again, as long as they're synced up, you're good because if you sit down at the computer, you put it on an event, you know it's going to go on your phone. Um, and so going into the projects in terms of when you're writing down notes and, and tracking a particular project, this is a really helpful suggestion. And I've, I've live by this for years now and most people don't do this but it really helps every whether you're a mac or pc person or linux every system has a tech like the basic text editor that just has bare bones nothing else on it. it's like a dot txt file use those for your projects create one file per project so you have if you have the project like finances one file not 10 files one file and the top of the the file has your notes and maybe separated by the date and the bottom of it has your action items list. Super simple, can copy and paste it into emails. It's e and you can often sync those between your phone and your computer. What I, I found that was, it, it's extremely helpful. It, they come up really fast. You don't add a bunch of other stuff to it. So in terms of tracking projects and action items, I highly, highly recommend doing that. Um, and then the last piece of the high tech system of, of time management is reminders. And what's, this is the key difference between a low tech and high tech approach. And this is why I lean towards this for most of the people that I work with. Um, if you have a, if you have a, a a paper-based planner, it doesn't come up and tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, this event's coming up. Don't forget about it. You have to open your planner and look at it or else you forget. This is the big plus to having a system where you have a calendar that syncs up. You can tell it to set defaults to every single time you set an event on your calendar. It reminds you beforehand. And so the one suggestion I would have is if you're using like Google Calendar or Hotmail, Go into the settings and there's a thing that says set default reminder. Set it to like 15 minutes or like 15 minutes and like two hours before the event. Then you don't have to set it every single time and it makes life so much easier. So that's one thing is set the defaults. Uh, set it extra reminders if you can so that you, each event has multiple reminders depending on how often you 
if you if you forget something over and over again, set multiple reminders to yourself. And the other nice thing about doing the digital uh, version is you can have recurrent event recurring events. So in terms of like exercise reminders, um, affirmations that you want to remember, uh, and then of course meetings and anything you schedule with someone else on the calendar. These are all things that you can set up so where they remind it's you get a reminder either on your phone or if you're at your computer it pops up. Th this system. Having this in place, taking the time to do it. It may take you a week, may it take you two weeks. Do it and do it. Make sure you understand it. And, you know, if you need to educate yourself, get online and, and study how the technology works a little bit. But have it in place, spend the time to set it up and stick with it. The, this, these are really important pieces, especially as we get into like life coaching and other things. This is, this is worth the time to do it. And, it's well it's repetitive but a lot of things we do in this podcast are because there are points that that come across over and over in in being wired this way so i'll say it again and not worry about being repetitive but we've mentioned before that as a hunter type by default habits forming habits the good ones uh are things we are not strong at when we're when we're not transform when we're just kind of the the normal hunter type living off of stimulation the ups and downs the peaks and the valleys this is now just like i said in exercise and diet i know it's hard at first i'll say it again with time management now i'm a, i'm a five out of ten because i'm still kind of struggling with it in the sense of still having some blocks in making some things habitual including actually setting the reminders it's mm -hmm. a weird paradox but I forget still to set the reminder of a new project and action item I need. I, I hop back on it. I'm just not there yet. I'm not perfect in my definition of, of wanting to be perfect. So just to reiterate, reiterate what Michael has said, it may be one week. It may be two weeks. You know, I hear people all the time giving different um, cliches that are out there now. It takes 14 days to form a habit. It takes 21 days yeah. to form. I don't know. I, I'm not going to tell you what it is for you. I know for some of these things, it's three weeks for me. It's a month. I'll look back and be like, oh, I finally got it. Wow, it took four weeks to form that good habit. I, I can't answer that for you. I do know, to reiterate what Michael said, it is worth it, and it is a key, key piece. Remember, this is Chapter 10 for a reason. Remember, we've built up to, yeah. by this point, you've built up that exercise program, that diet routine, everything else. Now you're here. Having done all that, you're here. One reminder for anybody that um, a quick tease, we're, we're getting ready to wrap things up, I know, but a quick tease that in Michael's wrap up at the end, Michael's going to talk about a book giveaway, which we're going to talk about, which he's going to talk about. And the reason I want to mention that is if you're a listener that's just tuned into the podcast so far, reminding you, this is just an audio guide to the book. You need the book. There's a lot more detail in the book than we can cover in 40 or 45 minutes on a podcast. So stay tuned for that uh, book giveaway as well. I'll turn it back over to you, Michael, to, to kind of tell us about the tips. What tips do you have? You've given us a lot of information here, a lot of different types of tools in different categories. Give us some of your tips for maintaining this system. Yes. Well, we already mentioned a few, which is um, commit to it and stay with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, you, you know, take take all this in. If you want to make adjustments, feel free, map it out, and then whatever you decide upon, stick with it. And again, coming back to just to the to recapping it, the you want you're going to split things up into projects. Every project is going to have an act. Each project has a set of action items, and then those action items get scheduled in time. And then the tools that we're talking about, once again, are a calendar, one place to place all your events and things in your schedule. You have action item list or lists, and then you have reminders. And um, one of the, we mentioned this before. If an if you fail, if there's an action on your action item list that you just continually don't do, and this is very common, then my suggestion is schedule it with someone else or delegate it. That is that seems to be the magic trick. Yep. Like if you can't get yourself to do it, you schedule it with someone else. Um, and again, it's not to say, if I may, it's not to say that eventually then you won't be able to do it yourself. I I know I use this trick that you mentioned. 
is that I got my wife involved on a couple of things, helping with it the first few times. I she doesn't need to be involved in it anymore. It's now become routine. But like you said, you just might need that other person to kind of get you started with it for whatever reason. There you go. And and it and there's no pr- and you know what that there's no shame in it. Yep. We we live in a society that tells you usually you have to do it by yourself. But right. seriously, <laughs> we all need support. And I I I don't know how I would even be here without all the support I have from this. Like building your support system is essential to just maintaining a happy, healthy life. It's it's yep. essential. We can't just do it on our own. Mm-hmm. Um, the last thing I would recommend, specifically as far as a specific in terms of uh, your time management system. Again, the book has got way more information. So this, we're just kind of touching the surface, a uh, lot more specifics. But the one thing I would recommend is, it, and it took me a long enough time to figure this out, look at your, train yourself to look at the weekly view of your calendar, not the daily view. That seems so simple, but it it really shifts your perspective. If you're constantly looking at, okay, here's what's just happening today. You're just look, you got blinders on. You're just seeing this. But if you just open it out, and again, it's the setting you can, depending on what calendar you're using, especially in terms of uh, the high tech approach, setting the weekly view as the default really helps because then you can kind of get a feel for, okay, here's what's happening this week, and it gives you that zoomed out perspective that I find is is helpful in terms of just waking up in the morning looking at what's happening and not just what's happening today. So that little change, that little shift of perspective can make a huge difference. Okay, great. So we've tried in most of our recent episodes, I think it started out being kind of impromptu and then we realized maybe we have something um, that people were appreciating, which was coming up with some kind of assignment, some kind of quote-unquote homework assignment uh, to take away from each uh episode that had to do with that topic. So Michael, tell us when it comes to time management, what do you recommend this week for people to take away and kind of go do as an assignment? Yeah. So if you, if you have the book and uh, I'll read this to you as well. So if you have the book, go to page 305, there's an exercise called my natural tendencies. And so what this is, is it's an exercise to give you uh, a sense of like when it's best to do certain things and schedule certain things. And so um, a lot of challenge, the challenge that a lot of people have is they, they just throw things on the calendar at random and think, okay, well, I, I, you know, I'll just do that here. And, the, and they don't think, well, when do I actually naturally, when am I better at doing certain things uh, during certain times of the day versus other times? So the exercise is this. So take a blank sheet of paper, draw seven equally spaced vertical columns, and just go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then ask yourself these questions and just start filling in some of the gaps in in this makeshift calendar, weekly calendar that you've mapped out. When do I feel most clear to do mundane tasks? When am I most naturally creative? When When do I most enjoy spending time with others? When do I need alone time? When do I need time to decompress and relax? When do I when would I like to get out in nature or exercise? And um start filling that out. Start to get a feel for when are the times during the day and during the week that fit for for certain types the things that you would place on the calendar for your projects in terms of health, in terms of work, in terms of uh, some of the goals that you have. Start to get a feel for like, okay, like for me, like mornings are always best for mundane tasks. As soon as I get towards three or four o'clock, there's no way I'm going to do something like, you know, uh, pay a bill or something like that. It's so much harder for me to do it. But if I wake up in the morning and I'm fresh or right after maybe I went for a run or something, I feel much clearer and I'm much more able to handle that task that could turn into a huge nightmare later in the day. So be honest with yourself, start to fill out some of your your schedule and, and then start to, then you can use that as a template for what could be your optimum weekly schedule, including exercise and health and shopping and all the things that you would need to connect with the things that we've been talking about on the podcast. Excellent. So speaking of the book, tell us about our book giveaway uh, this week. Yes. So our friends at Yoga Wisdom and Wellness, and they are good friends of mine, and I they've just 
can't say enough about them. They do lots of online events and workshops. Um, they're excellent, excellent, excellent. So they're doing a giveaway for three books. There's going to be three books given away in the next few weeks for The Drummer in the Great Mountain. So they'll be giving away three copies of it, physical copies. Uh, and so in order to be in the running, uh, go to yogawisdomandwellness.com. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a button that says join us on Facebook, like them, like the page, and then you'll find a post that says the, the, basically it's the giveaway post for the book. And just write a comment, Stay, and it'll be something – there will be instructions in the post, but basically comment as to like what's your interest in the book and why you'd like to get a free copy of it, just a note or two. And uh, in the next few weeks, they'll pick three winners and they'll ship out some books to you. Excellent. We are at the website, drummerandthegreatmountain.com. Click on that Facebook link to our Facebook page. We always look forward to your feedback. Share your stories. Tell us how you're doing. Tell us what you want to hear more of. It uh, is said every week on this podcast, but it's true. We do get feedback every week. And every week it helps us form how we do this show, what we do with the show, what we add, what we take away. So keep it coming. It really does influence us and it really does, does help us make this audio podcast, this audio guide to the book uh, kind of hum and, and keep going. Uh, I have nothing else for today. Michael, thank you once again for your time, my friend. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Always. Drummer in the Great Mountain podcast. Always a pleasure to be with you, and always, please, take care of yourselves and your health. Be well.
Thanks for tuning in. This podcast is intended solely for the purpose of personal growth and not as a replacement for professional psychological support. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests of this show are not meant to be taken as medical advice. It is very important to seek the help of a qualified medical practitioner when making any shifts to psychiatric medication you may be taking or if you are experiencing extreme psychological distress.